On today's show, we give you our thoughts from that Monday night football game. It's also waiver day, talking a lot of strategy, looking forward. Who are the players that we are targeting? What is the quarterback situation like? Make sure you don't miss a moment and subscribe. Subscribe right now. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. It's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't be nasty. Unless you want to be. I mean, sometimes it's all right. Jason's nasty. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> guilty as charged. I'm your host for today, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by the cardboard bear extraordinaire. <laughs> he's got the riz. He's got the grizz. And he's cardboard. Also joined by Jason Moore. Hot off a league of record victory. Thank you, Austin Eckler. Awesome, excellent. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he came through. It's really weird because he had a he had a bad game for him. Yeah, for for who he is. Like right. he had mm-hmm. three drops that you just never mm-hmm. ever see Austin Eckler make. But he also had an absolutely outstanding game with a couple of really big plays, and he is really just a touchdown machine yeah touchdowns count for a lot in fantasy football welcome into the podcast it is tuesday november 7th we will get into the the game (sighs) unfortunately we will be getting into the game do we have to yeah yeah we got to talk about it but we got a big announcement here uh do we have i don't know if there's a trumpet anywhere i don't know how to work this machine but we got an announcement here thank you deucers alley show 1500 is rapidly approaching. How fast? Well, it's on Thursday. <laughs> so, okay, that's so the day after tomorrow. We are really picking up steam here. And we thought it would be fun to vote on the top 10 ballers' nicknames of all time. Now, when you say of all time, yeah, it's going to take you a while to do this vote. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if, if you've been with the show for a while, number one, thank you so much. But two... It will be a stroll down memory lane for you because it was for us of like, oh, yeah, I, that was a good time. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to vote for that, just join our Discord. It's completely free, ballersdiscord.com. Go into the announcements channel, and there will be a link to a gigantic survey where you can hopefully narrow it down to your top 10. It's it's not an easy task. We have all done it. It's a fun task, it's, But though. it's very fun. Like, when yeah. I first saw it and I scrolled and I saw the names, I was like, oh, man. And then as I started reading, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. I was clicking ones, and then I kept scrolling, and I would have to go back and unclick one from uh-huh. the top. And just, oh, man. It was tough breaking it down, but but you got to do it at ballersdiscord.com. And, and please do it, because we want to know. Yeah, we do. What the What the... Foot Clan's favorites are over the course of time. If you want to watch the show, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. That's where we go live each and every Sunday. Usually me, but sometimes there's a random cast of characters that jump in. On the socials, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. On Twitter, at the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. All right. Into the sweltering nasty like the bad nasty mm-hmm. disgusting fart fest that was the los angeles chargers against the new york jets the chargers trounced the jets 27 to 6 but, but not really but it didn't the jets trounced the jets 27 to 6 is really what happened the the the, the jets defense was fantastic against yes. the chargers um they they didn't give up 27 points they really didn't obviously the special teams touchdown to start the game uh you know was not that defense's fault and then it's really not the defense's well, fault it's, it's the special teams it's the jets fault Sh- well yeah i mean it's all the jets fault yeah. uh but the the, the turnovers <laughs> on offense especially at right. the end of the game that put austin eckler you know inside the five for an easy walk-in touchdown it's like you, you can't really blame them and you can't give much credit to the Chargers because they struggled to move the ball the whole game, both sides. It was just like, oh my gosh, I feel like every play 
It's like two yards. Two yards. Both teams. Just like something underneath, something quick, something boring. That's how it felt. I and it I've, lasted forever. I have an interesting question for you. Who played better? Justin Herbert or Zach Wilson? <laughs> That's Justin Herbert. And I know what you're saying because Zach Wilson, he threw the ball pretty well. He had 263 yards and at times looked really, really well. But the reason that Justin Herbert definitely is the correct answer and he played better than Zach Wilson is because Zach Wilson's inability to sense pressure, to see the pressure, to stop himself from getting sacked eight times, to stop from fumbling twice. Her Herbert was five. Uh, but, I mean, protecting the ball. Like, yes. the issue okay. here was the fumbles and the turnovers caused by a lack of awareness. You can see it in that Zach Wilson finished the game with a higher passer rating, but the QBR, the newer metric that is out there, Justin Herbert's was significantly higher. Austin Eckler was the bright spot, aside from the DST. Um, oh, goodness. I, I don't know who put this text conversation in here, um, but uh, one of us was talking to a friend, and oh, so Kyle's friend here, the Borgogan, text a friend who was – who got 30 points from the DST, from, from the Chargers here. We're talking a 1% chance of victory. Yeah, you and need the, 30 points from a defense <laughs> going into Monday night. And then the Chargers, oh, man. This, Zach Wilson said, yeah, I got you. Just an absolute incredible performance from that. Keenan Allen was fine. Uh, Garrett Wilson was fine. Other than that, it was really disappointing. Yeah, uh, Brees Hall was was okay. How many? Let's see. How he many? had four receptions, so that kind of okay, helped yeah. pad the stats. But four four for ten is like that is not that's not what you want from Brees Hall, and what you definitely don't want from Brees Hall is Michael Carter at six receptions. Well, but that was that was in almost entire. Was that the garbage? <clears throat> that was just time? the garbage time all drive right. where Michael we, Carter was in okay. the two minute drill, and he I think he uh, he might have had all six receptions on that drive. It was absurd. Yep. So just a rough game. Quentin Johnston. Oh, that's that's a storyline. That's an important so, storyline. Uh tweet from Adam Levitan. He was just highlighting, you know, the routes and you would not know it. No. But huge ran the most routes at the wide receiver position for the Chargers, and that turned into two for fourteen. Now with uh with only three targets, that's Really bad. Now, they, they went for it right at the very beginning of the game. I think it was second or third down. They tested the Jets. They aired it out, and it was a bracket coverage, and Sauce Gardner was just right there with Huge and easily knocked the ball down. So perhaps they saw that and went, nope, this is not going to work. We're not going to go to it. So where – I mean, like, are you even are you rostering? No, him in I, I, I don't. I don't think so. It's After, waiver day, so we're going to talk about other players. Yeah, I mean, there are plenty of players I would rather pick up, and you know, and therefore drop Quentin Johnston on my roster. You, you know, we talk about targets per route run as one of those really important stats, and what that is is means how often when you actually run a route are you receiving the target? Are you earning the target? Well, he ran a lot of routes, thirty-five. And he had three targets. So he's not getting open or he's not in the place where Herbert wants him to be or he's not an important enough look in the offensive scheme. Whatever the reason, it's just continuing to happen. And, you know, that's that's really disappointing. The, the, it's the combination of, like, you can forgive a player who hasn't yet received his opportunity. But once you start seeing a player receive more and more opportunity and do nothing with it, a la Sky Moore, right? That's where it starts to get scary, and you go, eh, maybe, maybe he just doesn't have it. Now he was a, <clears throat> he was more of a potential prospect, you know, a, a, a an athlete that was more raw. So yeah, you got to give the physical him physical traits are there. You got to give him more time. You're not going to write off his career. But like I'm on, like I went from yellow to red on my alert level. Okay. So, is there anything else you want to talk about for the game, or just are we done here? I think we're. I think we can move on. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Cardinals update number one: the team is quote hoping 
to, to open the 21 day practice. Yeah, had you, not, you hadn't seen that, had you? I hadn't seen it when, phrased as we're hoping yeah. to, to do this. That just when when I, I I understand it, but it feels silly to say it like that. When it's it's like the coach is like, why didn't this person get the ball? You're like, well, I'm gonna have to look into that. You're the coach. Yeah, you, you're you, the you're the you're the people who can do this. But I, I I get it. They're saying James Conner may not be ready yet to come back. I don't think that is what they're saying. No, I think they're. Do you saying, think he's back this week? We don't know. Oh, is this Gannon? Up I to think his it's nonsense. Like, I think it's Gannon. Ease. That's what I think this is. We we basically all know Kyler has to be activated this week. He can't play that game anymore. He's not going to say, "Well, we might put Kyler back on the pup." Like he's still saying stupidly well if he has a good pre uh, week of practice then you know hopefully it goes well and he could be the starter yeah that's, it was that's the next piece of information was barring any setbacks yeah yeah Kyler I mean, Murray is expected to start but but Gannon, to, to speak man. to James Conner it was reported last week I mean maybe maybe that report was wrong but we had heard that James Conner last week was fully healthy and ready to go and so this week, now that his 21-day uh, window opens up, we fully expect him to be the starter paired with Kyler and uh, maybe a healthy offense going forward. We don't know about Michael Wilson, uh, but he might be there too. Yep, so some some potentially good news here for the Cardinals and their players. Debo Samuel of the 49ers, he returned to practice. That's tremendous news. Sean McVay of the Rams said Kyron Williams is expected to return week 12. He also, what's the? They're on bye right now for Week Ten, and they are hopeful that Matthew Stafford will play in Week Eleven, as is the rest of the known football universe. Right, like we're, if we're all very hopeful that not, Matthew Stafford will start. Yeah, not just Rams or Rams fans. Any fan other than fans of the opposing team, right? All want to not have Brett ripping farts out there. <laughs> Because that just implodes. Daryl Henderson, you can't uh, play him. Royce Freeman, you can't play him. Cooper Cup, bench him. Puka, bench him. Brett Rippin farts can't get it done in the NFL. How much of Brett's upbringing, like when he was a youth, how many times today did he hear that joke? Uh, probably not enough. Like, <laughs> you know, and a lot. He's in the NFL, Jason. <laughs> uh, if, he, if you're in the NFL, even as a terrible backup quarterback, that means... Like at some point of your life, you were dominant. Oh, it was much more Brett's ripping it, you know, in a good way, like slinging the ball okay. around. But you know, you're at this level, you're you're ripping farts. We have higher expectations. Jamar Chase is day to day with a sore back. If I mean, we all saw the play in in the game where Jamar Chase elevated for a catch, didn't catch it, but then came down directly on his back. So we will monitor him. Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel says Devon Achan yeah, is baby. on track yeah, baby. for week 11. The Dolphins are on bye this week. The Bears. <sighs> this one is tough because the Bears play Thursday night. Is, am, I, am I correct in that one? Yeah, yes, sir. I'm getting nods. Khalil Herbert mm -hmm. returning from a high ankle sprain. The 21-day window was opened. He was listed as a full participant. Yeah. It's a short week of practice, though, and he's still returning from the high ankle sprain. What does this do for you, Jason, of looking at Deonta Foreman, who saw his highest running back share this past week? I believe he had 20 carries. And he's looked excellent. And he's looked, he's looked he yes, has, very he has good. been leaping guys, getting yards after contact. He's been great. What this says to me is that Khalil Herbert will be active and in the game. What will be really, really interesting to see is what happens with the other two guys as far as roster-wise. Because if you remember before Khalil Herbert went down, Deonta Foreman wasn't active because he's yes. not a special teams player, and they wanted uh, their third running back to be someone that could assist on special teams. So it'll be interesting to see there is a world where Deonta Foreman is inactive for this game, and Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson um, are the two primary backs. What it does is it affects the waiver pickup like I had, Originally, Deonta Foreman um, as like my number two running back pickup this week. But with the news that Khalil Herbert's practicing in full, I'm not in. In fact, you 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 might want to check and see if Khalil Herbert's on waivers. If he's been gone, if you're in a league without IR and he had to be dropped. Sure. Um, but it really, I don't want any of the r running backs now. It wasn't valuable back before uh, the injury. And, I, you know, 
coming off of a high ankle sprain, you're usually not at peak performance week one. Justin Fields was lim uh, listed as a limited participant on Monday. Again, short week. Doubtful, so, I think. Yeah, we will see. When asked about Zay Jones on Monday, Doug Peterson did not shoot down the possibility of Jones going on IR. Did, I mean, this... Doug Peterson's this, a pretty straight shooter uh, with stinks. injuries. So, I think, you know... You're not getting Zay Jones now. I mean, what that what that comment means of not shooting down IR is he's not playing now, and that's all you need to know. Like, he, he should probably be on waivers. And then just the reminder, the players who are eligible to return to practice soon, this does not mean that they are. Justin Jefferson. Mm, that's the big name. And, and before you name the rest, so when his injury first happened, mm -hmm. it was reported to be a four- to six-week injury. Yes, and we okay. were at four We're now. at four weeks. He is eligible to be activated. The vibes, I mean, he's been traveling with the team every week. He wants to get back. The team has been winning. Everything is great. But the vibes right now in the reporting is that he's not really expected to be activated this week. And if you start going to the four to six timeline, I mean, this is their franchise player. They don't want to risk re-aggravation, even though they want him back, and I'm sure he wants to be back. Uh, but if you go, okay, it's more on the six-week timeline, and so now you're going into not just week 10, but week 11. Now you're one week away from the bye. They got the bye right. in 13. Mm -hmm. And so you go, oh, man, if we've waited this long, do we get them back? So it, it's it's something to monitor. Um, I unfortunately had to make a decision in a keeper league to trade him away. Part of that was because of the realization that if it's on the six-week timeline, it might be a seven-week timeline, which makes it an eight-week timeline which means he comes back for one week before the fantasy playoffs. So, yep. uh, so TBD, but he is he is eligible to return this yep. week. So we all are crossing the fingers. Hopefully, by the time you're hearing this, you go, well, that's old busted news, and Justin Jefferson's looking good to a return. James Conner, we talked about, and Khalil Herbert. Next week would be A-Chan and the Muth. Yeah. The, maybe the Muth, and then week 12 will be Kyron Williams coming back. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Oh, yeah, baby. Call of Duty up in here. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. All right, the bye this week. The Chiefs, Dolphins, Eagles, and Rams are all on the bye week. Whew. Yeah. That's I know. gross. <laughs> that's, that, those are some big names. No Mahomes, no that's, Hurts, no that's, Tua. It's three of the, the big six quarterbacks that we had talked about. Uh, and next week, because always be preparing for next week, next week is the Colts, Falcons, Patriots, and Saints. Not as devastating, but still some players there. At the running back position, here we are. Jason, who is your number one pickup of the week my my number one pick is it is it the flashy hotness or is it the second round pick uh my number one pickup at the running back position is nobody I don't I feel like <laughs> I feel like I don't I, I mean that like if I had if you're not in a fab system if you're in a waiver priority system and you've got the number one you know uh waiver priority I'm not burning it on a running back this week um there are a few names that you could pick up to maybe start um, so the, I think the two, I think the two primary names, correct me if I'm wrong, would be Zach Charbonnet and Keaton Mitchell. That is, that's who I have. So, so those two rookie running backs, Zach Charbonnet, the backup running back for the Seattle Seahawks, who is very talented, was a second round draft pick, has out snapped Ken Walker for two weeks, but has been pretty much irrelevant for fantasy. Even, even with those snap shares, he's not really uh, amassing a lot of volume. Um, an opportunity for fantasy. He is still a backup. Even even if the snaps are higher, he is clearly the backup in the gameplay. So it's like, I don't want... I'm not looking forward to playing a backup running back. Um, and then you've got Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell, an undrafted free agent from East Carolina, rookie who's come in unexpectedly. I didn't scout him in the pre-NFL uh, draft time. And he's neither just, did the NFL, right? Um, and he's just looked really, really, really great. He has a chance speed. Yeah, uh, four three seven forty time, and we've seen it 
on display. I mean, the, the last week he had nine carries for 138 yards and a touchdown. And so the Baltimore Ravens offense is in need of someone like this. Right now, it's still Justice Hill getting the vast majority of snaps over Gus Edwards, over Keaton Mitchell. And Gus Edwards was also dealing with a uh, toe injury, I mm -hmm. believe that's what it was listed as, uh, heading into the week. Um, not enough to keep him out, but maybe that was enough to alter the, the, the snap share between Gus and Justice. Yeah, so between these two guys, I mean, you've got kind of more – hopeful upside I think right now with Keaton Mitchell without an injury ahead of him like Zach Charbonnet needs Ken Walker to go down to be a fantasy sensation right Keaton Mitchell there's hopes where you go oh he could he could just beat out Justice Hill like in a couple weeks if he keeps getting more and more use it, maybe right. he, maybe Justice Hill just takes a back seat and they say hey our, our team has more juice with with Keaton the truth is I think neither one of these players becomes a dominant fantasy options so that's why I said I don't have a number one pickup at the running back position this week you could make an argument that the better pickup is Antonio Gibson if you just need a start this week yeah I was gonna say don't look now but Antonio Gibson has been getting you know decent opportunity in the passing game we're at two straight weeks of five targets and he's Antonio Gibson so he's doing good things with those opportunities still is the bit player compared to Brian Robinson, but targets and receptions are worth far more than than uh, than carries. So m maybe, maybe, and this this new look um, Washington team where they're you know they traded away the defensive players, maybe they have to pass a bit more to keep up. Maybe that gets Antonio Gibson on the field a little bit more. Justice Hill, he just <laughs> he's I think he's been in every single waiver list that we have put out. This year, he it's it's tough to gauge. Like if if Baltimore truly goes to three players, a three headed monster at the running back position, it's going to be just brutal each and every week to pick. I mean, Gus Edwards is the one who feels the, yeah. the safest in terms of he might only get five carries all of this week, but those carries are going to come inside the the ten should the Ravens get down there. So I, I'm with you, Jay. That I'm not over the moon about adding any of these players, but you always got to be looking forward. I think that I would prioritize Keaton just because I I think there's a chance that he could outplay Justice Hill. Basically, what you're saying, where Charbonnet, it's going to fluctuate. They're like Ken Walker will not go away. Charbonnet cannot outplay Ken Walker off the field. Where Keaton Mitchell, there's a chance right. over the next few weeks that that well, happens. You look at Justice Hill the last month. The last month, he Justice Hill's played a lot of snaps, 63%, 50% of the snaps. He's he's played the most snaps at running back for the Baltimore Ravens. He's had opportunities. This last week, he had 14 opportunities given his direction. He scored four fantasy points. The week before, seven. The week before, five. The week before, five. Like, I'm going to take the shot on Keaton Mitchell. I don't, I don't need four or five or seven fantasy points that, sure. that does nothing and and I'm not wanting to start any of these guys so really if you're looking at a running back this week you're looking at insurance options you're looking at backup guys who might sky forward with an injury ahead of them obviously the probably the, the biggest one would be Tajay Spears because he, he would be the one that yeah he's on about half of waivers he remains a very interesting player of six targets he, depending on the game script that the the Titans find themselves in, Spears will be on the field a bit more. The player that we're back, I'm going to highlight him real quick. It's Ty Chandler mm -hmm. of the Minnesota Vikings. When he had his opportunity at the beginning of the year, when it was Alexander Madison and, and Chandler was the backup, Chandler was not getting on the field. Now, things could be different. Uh, obviously, the, the the Vikings traded for Cam, sorry, Cameron. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Akers showed up and he was starting to get more and more snaps. You know, are they indicating they are not pleased with Madison's play? Perhaps. That, so that, does that, that mean that, that, that could have been an indication they're not happy with Ty Chandler's play? Right. Yeah, that, there's yeah, there's so many variables we just don't know, but there is the chance moving forward now that Chandler gets on the field more because they they want to introduce him as a change of pace back. Madison is a grinder. He does not have special speed. Chandler does. He's he's extremely fast, and their schedule moving forward 
aside from this week against the Saints, their their schedule is pretty favorable for the running back position. So I think that he is worth a cheap speculation ad just to see this week. Does he actually get on the field? Yeah, and to and to appease Jay Grizz, um <laughs> Thank you. Um both Deonta Foreman and Khalil Herbert, just just look. I mean, they both deserve to be rostered, even if you're not going to play one until there's clarity. Um, but take a look at your waivers, see if they're there. And if you have, like, if if you're not trying to add one of these players, a reminder: pick up your insurance running backs. Mm -hmm. If you have ETN, get Tank. If, if you should be picking up Tank. If you have Christian McCaffrey, you should be picking up Elijah Mitchell. Should you be picking up Joshua Kelly? Oh no, man. <laughs> Uh, we, I, no, we, we no, kind of saw what no, that no, no. turned into. No, I don't think so. He, Joshua Kelly had the opportunity. It's one of those things where it's like Joshua Kelly had missed games where Austin Eckler wasn't there, and he had his opportunity. And what he taught me was, if Austin Eckler misses more games, don't put in Joshua <laughs> Kelly. So, like, why yeah, pick him up? It's it's fair. Hey, quick break, and then we are back with the wide receivers. Wide receivers, Jay, who is at the top of your list? Do you have any yeah. – or let's start. Are there must-adds this week? Yes, there are two okay, must – So better than the running backs. There are, oh, much better. There are two must-adds, must, must, must-adds. Now, they are still rostered in about 60% of leagues. So, you know, but you you have to take a look. Um, Tank Dell and Jahan Dotson have to be on rosters now. Uh, Dotson's had targets in three straight weeks. He's had two great games in a row. He's a first-round NFL draft pick that is talented, and Sam Howell oh. uh, looks like he's getting it together. Their defense is worse after trading people. Um, and Tank Dell, rookie sensation, who is <laughs> – he's had a funny season because he's been very boomer bust. You know, he's got three games right now with more than 15 fantasy points already. And then he's got four games where he, you know, didn't hit seven fantasy points. So – but the flashes on the field have shown that he is legit. He is there to play. His his production in college was insanity. Uh, so this is translated from college to the NFL. And then you've got C.J. Stroud, who looks just like the real deal. So I would personally take Tank Dell over Jahan Dotson. I think that's fair. Uh, targets per route run on the season. Tank is at uh, 21 point four percent Nico's at twenty two so it is getting divvied up between those two guys just knowing uh, yeah boom bust I get it but knowing that at any given week Tank Dell could go off mm -hmm. like that's that's a player that you want to have on your roster you want to be balanced and have guys starting that you know are going to give you points but we always talk about injecting volatility Demario or Demario Douglas mm -hmm. aka Dirty Pop Dirty Pop in his first real opportunity, seven targets, five, four. Is he an easy? He he's a back, easy, uh, he's an easy option right behind those other two wide receivers. Yes, he is. Um, he's also got a good matchup against um, Indianapolis this week. So if you need someone that you have to pick up and play with kind of hopeful long term upside, uh, Pop Douglas is is certainly in there. He played eighty three percent of the snaps. That coincided with the ACL injury to Kendrick Bourne, and came through with a an okay game. I mean, it wasn't. He certainly did not uh, dominate or have right. a great fantasy uh, day. But when you get seven targets, catch seventy one percent of them, um, you're involved in the offense. You've got a good matchup coming up. I'm I'm not excited, but I think it's um, someone that should be rostered. Where are we at with Noah Brown, who was, along with Tank Dell, was the hero of that game with the Texans? Yeah. He's been kind of on and off the field. You know, week one, he was more of a full-time wide receiver than he missed an entire month, and he's been slowly working his way back in. 72% of the snaps the past two weeks, five targets against Carolina. That would turn into three for 57. So, I mean, that's – you know, much like Pop Douglas, that's that's not terrible. It's not terrible, but but, but then the huge the huge game this past week, and that did include Robert Woods being out. Right. That uh, two things I want to bring up is I I I I, I like C.J. Stroud, but I don't want to go to the wide receiver three. 
He might have a big game here or there, but he's the wide receiver three for this offense, and I don't need a rookie's wide receiver three. And Robert Woods will be back. He's dealing with his foot issue. I don't know if he'll be back this week or not. They, I don't believe they put him on IR, which means they assume it's fewer than four weeks. We've already missed two, so uh, very possible he is back this week. Um, so, no, I, I'm not in on Noah Brown. I mean, the guys like Noah Brown, Khalil Shakir, you could take a shot on them because they could end up with a big play, but I'm not very excited about them. I think a player that I'm more excited about who is widely available is another rookie, Michael Wilson, of the Arizona Cardinals. Um, the Cardinals' offense is is just about to change, like completely. Yes, complete turnover. You look at what the you look at the reverse of what's going on right now with like the Rams, right? You you got Brett ripping farts mm -hmm. in there, and all of a sudden everybody sucks. If you started the season with Brett ripping farts, and the and the entire Rams' offense is just that looked, in the system yet? Brooks, ooh, it is not. Is that officially? I mean, I'll get it in there. Yeah, yeah. let's let's update there. Um, but if you start, just, just in case someone goes and looks at Brett's profile, right? They need to know <laughs> this dude rips farts. Um, <laughs> that dude ripped. That dude, dude rips them. <laughs> We're talking rocket farts. Uh, for his noodle arm. Uh, but you know, you would look at that Rams offense and say, man, I don't, even, I don't want a piece of this. But you obviously saw. So much value in the running game, in the passing game, when Stafford was there. Just do it in reverse, right? You And I know that there's concerns of like, well, Kyler's coming back from injury. Will he be? He will be much better than what has been out there. Like, yes. If Kyler is at 75%, if Kyler's at 50%, he will be much better than what has been out there. And that's not a, a slander to... Yeah, to take it easy. With to, Nash, national hero. To national hero Josh Dobbs, who I love. It's just the truth. He's the he, he was the number one pick for a reason. He's been great his entire career. I mean, it's funny when you look at the Arizona Cardinals and you go, okay, when they didn't have Kyler, they had the number one overall pick. That's how they got Kyler. With Kyler, they made the playoffs. They were a 7-0 and team at one point. Kyler gets injured. And without him, right now, if the NFL season was over, they have the number one pick again. Kyler's good. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, I, I I'm wanting to take shots yep. on those on the Arizona Cardinals. Offense. I I'm in agreement there. Michael Wilson would be the one off the waiver. I don't mind a trying to trade for Hollywood Brown right now or mm -hmm. I mean, T McBee, aka Trey McBride. Probably not on the waivers, but uh, you might just want to have a look there. Uh, who would you rather have on your roster right now, Jamison Williams <laughs> or Huge? Ooh. And our little note here from Kyle for Jameson says he's been on by since coming into the NFL. <laughs> that is, oh, that man. is true. Um, if I had to pick between those two guys, it would be Jameson Williams. Because coming into the NFL, I had a lot of red flags with Huge. Quentin Johnston wasn't a prospect I was he, in love He was with. not a slam dunk. Agreed. He, he, he was, the thing I liked about him the most was that he was drafted in the first round. By the Chargers. By the Chargers. Yeah. Before... Yeah. His draft capital, he was like, eh, there's there's a lot of things I don't like. He's talented. He's a good athlete, um, but I, I'm not in love. Whereas Jamison Williams in college, he was my number two wide receiver coming out. I thought he was going to be a sensation. He's just never done it yet, and I, I've got a lot of worries, but I would take Jamison Williams. Okay. Plus, you got a good matchup this week against the Chargers. And just a quick reminder that Detroit did trade for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Uh, before the trade deadline, who is a field stretcher? Yeah, so Th that was kind of they they lost uh, Marvin I, Jones. Retired. I get it, but there is I think there's a chance that he's just on the field instead of Jamison. Oh, Williams. I completely. Agree. Jamison Williams is. Not, I think they say in his contract he's not allowed to have more than forty percent of snaps. He like, wrote, that's got, he wrote that in. He wrote that in. He's like, I don't that's want smart. Don't you put me in the fifties, or certainly not above that. Uh, Zay, I really wanted Zay Jones to be a speculative ad. Mm -hmm. Coming off of the bye week, because I think that Zay Jones is a good player, and the short amount that we've seen him this year, Trevor Lawrence likes throwing the ball to Zay Jones, but injuries are a massive concern. And then if you are in very deep leagues, because I get it, I mean we, we we have all these guys, and even though they're low roster percent, a lot of them are still on. They're already on teams in like our league of record because it's a hyper competitive league. If you're in a very deep league. Take a look at Cedric Tillman, 
rookie wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. He did. I mean, he only got one target this past week, one for three against the Arizona Cardinals. So that's a bit of a bummer. But his snaps skyrocketed after the trade of Donovan Peoples Jones. So if if Watson gets back into some form of playing good ish, and it's not just Amari Cooper, then there's I think there's a chance that Cedric Tillman gets involved. Sure. Uh, the last name I'll throw out there. This is if you need a start this week, and you're just looking, at, you, you're like, my team's okay, but I'm because of bye weeks, I'm short my flex or I'm short my wide receiver three, and I got to put someone off of waivers straight into the lineup. I'm gonna throw out Josh Reynolds. Um, Josh Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yep. he started really really hot on the season, and he has. He's been much cooler, but he's still out there. He's still out there 70%, 80% of snaps, uh, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. Jamison Williams coming back has not hurt the snap percentage of Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds we know can have a big game, and I expect a shootout of, on really nice back-and-forth affair with plenty of opportunity for points in the Chargers-Lions matchup coming up this week. People are asking for permission to drop Christian Watson. If Christian Watson it's, was on waivers, I'm I'm picking him you'd up. Pick over, him up over just about everybody we just talked about. Uh, so they looking yeah. at the the situation for him. The past three weeks have been uh, no. He hasn't hit no, five like, points. Yeah, no fewer than four, but no more than four point eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's living in the fours. Um, he's had uh, he he's had a couple plays that were Man. near misses to change it. He's still on the field for around 80% of snaps. That might be just the Two MO weeks. for the entire year. Is I mean, near it, misses. Could be. It could be. But he is a talented player. So if he was out there, there's no chance I would but that, not pick him up. That's why I'm asking the question is because I feel like if I saw Christian Watson on the waiver, i go, ooh, I hope no one noticed. But there's a chance that he's just he's a landmine drop. He could that be. You, you are sabotaging someone else's team by making them go, ooh, Christian Watson. It, I would pick up Tank Dell ahead of Christian Watson if he was out there on waivers. I'd pick Jahan up John Dodson, Dodson over him as well. And then and then that would be where Christian Watson would <sighs> file in. Maybe Douglas. I would rather have Christian Watson than Demario uh, Douglas. I, I think I get it, but that's that's so tough. Yeah. At the tight end position, Taysom Hill is still somehow available in about forty percent of leagues. I mean I uh, I had a uh, well documented feud with Taysom Hill last year yeah. because it just was so upsetting and so gadgety. Uh, and then the Saints looked at the gadget and they said, "We need to enhance the plans. We need even more Taysom Hill out mm -hmm. there," which he's been getting used a lot in all three parts of the game. So, I mean, Taysom Hill is it. The roster percentage is wild because. I, I think I think there's a lot of people out there like me that they're, you're frustrated by, but just how goofy it is. It's so gadgety, and, but it's working, and, and they're going to it a lot. And over the last couple of years, while it's worked some weeks, it doesn't work others, and he's like a 30% snap type of player. But like you said, now he's like a 50% yeah. snap player, and he's being used in the passing game. He's never going to not be used in the in the running game. He's actually been throwing the ball. This is a month straight of top 10 tight end fantasy finishes. And three weeks straight of top five. So yeah, he he is he's been really good. Brooks, are you? Is this gif here of Inspector Gadget? Are you saying to call him Inspector Gadget? Maybe, <laughs> maybe you throw it out and see how just, it, how it lands. He's just so. I goofy. don't understand why. Did you? You never watch Inspector Gadget? No, I did. You're just saying because he. Cause, cause you kept I'm, saying he's so gadgety. Because I'm saying he's so gadgety, and it's it it reminds me. It's a similar situation of like he just. Inspector Gadget would was a calamity, but he would just fluke into being the winner. Which I mean, he was helped by uh, uh, what was the 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 daughter was Penny. The only the thing dog I, was Brain. Am I getting that right? I'm sure you are. You've got a mind like a steel trap. But the only problem there is that I like Taysom Hill, the guy. And whereas like Inspector Gadget, the guy was like he just took credit he for everything. He was a loser. He was goofball. a goofball. <laughs> Oh, I love Michael Keaton. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we'll see. Oh, yeah, we'll noodle. We'll let, noodle we'll let the people think about it. Dalton Schultz, not widely available, but worth taking a look. We we broke him down yesterday of he is just – he has really ascended, much to my surprise. J John U. Smith. Oh, man. 
I, 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 I can't. So it's kind of like what you were Dude. just saying with Taysom Hill, where there's something in you that refuses to pick him up, even though he's getting it done. You're yeah. just like, no, I'm not going to do it. He's not a real yeah. tight end. I he's will not the, support this. And let me just say, I will not pick up John Smith. <laughs> I, I won't do it. I won't do it. The and, guy gets jet sweep carries on the goal line. His opportunity is great. He is a top 10 tight end so far on the course of the season. We but have that really does come from just a handful of three, big games. Three good games, and the rest have been not good. Yeah, yeah. the majority of his games like still detrimental. Stink. So I, I, I can't Would recommend Would you rather have him. Janu or Cade Otten? Cade Otten. Uh, Cade Otten looked really good last week. The matchup against Tennessee is one where it's usually more of a pass funnel coming up. Kate Otten hasn't been great, but six targets or more in three straight weeks. Um, this last week was an unexpected shootout, so you don't expect that to happen uh, too often, but he was really, really good. 70 yards, two touchdowns. If I had to pick between those two, I'm not saying rush to the waivers and pick up Kate Otten. I would rather have Hunter Henry. Then Kate Otten or Jonu Smith. Okay. Hunter Henry is still available in the majority of leagues. And Gerald Everett is out there, should you be so desperate. He had a good run. <laughs> he did. He did. That was he, what you could say about he, he did. Gerald Everett. He is, he is a mountain of a man. At the DST position, the Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders. Wait, who plays the Jets? Because I'm pretty sure the Chargers aren't a great defense. They are. They're okay. They're middle of the pack. Right. They're not great. And they just put up 30. Who plays the Jets, Mike? It would be the Las Vegas Raiders, yep. which we – I forgot to share this quote. Andrew Siciliano tweeted it. Head coach Robert Sala said, quote, I'm not going to say it was even close to Zach Wilson's worst game. Now, to be fair to the quote, I don't know the full context of what was said, but as a soundbite, woof. Well, to be – Woo. To be fair to the quote, it it wasn't close to Zach Wilson's I, worst game. I know, but I, that's the problem is you're saying something that you maybe you feel like you're defending the quarterback, except you are not. You you are just throwing him under the bus even further. It, the Jets are what Dude. is it? Cutting off the nose to spite the face, right? Like they are their refusal to. Admit that Zach Wilson is bad. It's not like he's their their refusal to say he's a bad quarterback. Like that's where they need to get to. We do not get the Jets in prime time. Oh my gosh, is, is that the Jet game they didn't flex in time? Oh, it it is. Sweet Sunday night, everybody waiting all day for <laughs> waiting all day for the Jets versus the Raiders. Oh, gross. Um, well, yeah, it'll be fun if you've got the Raiders yeah. DST. That's all I know. But the man. I, this is not a fantasy talk, but the Jets are four and four. The Jets are in, they're in the, the, the division race. If like, they traded for someone like Andy Dalton, uh, you know, Andy Dalton could, could absolutely do a hundred times better right now than what Zach Wilson is doing. Yeah. And I, I see it from the coaching perspective of you believed in this player that's why you drafted him number two overall. You had a chance to get a an instant Hall of Famer on your team, so I don't fault them for doing that. But you, I mean, it's hard to keep your locker room if when the defense is playing the way that they are playing. They sh they shut down Justin Herbert, shut him down, and they still got shellacked. I mean. I, I I don't know how long you can hold on to. Go you. sign Carson Wentz. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, no, no. Let's, I, let's pump the brakes. No, but for Take real. Take it easy. For real. Take it easy. Look, I'm not saying Carson That's Wentz is a That's a marginal upgrade. That is. It is a significant no. upgrade from Zach Wilson to no, Carson No, it Wentz. is not. Let me surprise you with a couple statistics, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carson Wentz for the Colts. Bad Carson Wentz, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Late career Carson uh -huh. Wentz. How many touchdowns do you think he threw? Uh, I don't know, 24? 27. Okay. How many interceptions do you think he threw? A lot. Seven. Okay. 27 to seven? This dude's 30 years old, and he's just sitting there 
You can go sign him. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants him on their team. I mean, that's fair. that's a fair counterpoint. <laughs> that dude must suck. Like, I don't, or or he wants too much money. Sure. What? Well, I, yeah. I mean, I I don't know what the reason is. Personality, money, locker room, whatever. But like, yeah, there the, is the counterpoint to Carson Wentz is is he's been on what well, it was like four teams in two years or whatever. Yeah. He, even with the Manders, I mean, he had an eighty uh, QBR in his final season. He's 30 years old. At 80? Q- no, no, no. Hey, that's a pass. It's got to be passer rating. No. No. QBR. No. Uh, that's, no what, that, that's what the... All right. I don't know. If that's what our website says. All right. We gotta Maybe double, we've got a label drawn. we got to double check that because I don't believe it. Uh, the Raiders are in play. The Green Bay Packers are in play against Kenny Pickett. Would you play Seattle against the Manders? Yeah. You know, Sam Howell has been has, he, is on pace to be the most sacked quarterback ever. But the past two weeks have been better. Yeah, he, uh, it has been better, but um, the the sacks should come. That Leonard Williams with Seattle Seahawks, and and one of the things that is um, true of well run franchises, you saw this, you've seen this with with teams several times this year. When there's an embarrassing loss, you often come back with the foot on the gas and. The Seahawks were embarrassed by the Baltimore Ravens this last week, and I'm not going to take that as the new normal. I'm going to take that as the new motivation. We do also have an update, Jason. That is definitely quarterback rating. That is not QBR. We're talking so like wait, is the Q- quarterback rating quarterback? not QBR? No, it is not. What does QBR stand QBR for? was the statistic? No, but what does it stand for? Uh. It, okay, maybe we need to update the label to yeah. to passer rating. Yeah, but, there you go. But his uh, his QBR, which was the statistic invented by ESPN, it was thirty four in Washington, and that goes to a hundred. <laughs> now the the other rating, that's the one that goes up to like one hundred thirty two or some mm-hmm. some weird number. My point was he stunk, and no one wants him on the team. What is Zach Wilson's? Oh, I don't know. I it's not great. This is definitely not great. Uh, let's see. Any other defenses you want to highlight? Would you the the Panthers against Chicago? Would you dance uh, with that devil? Man, it's really tough to trust the Panthers. I, I would, mean, Jay Grizz does not approve, but I would trust the Bears against the Panthers. Okay, I, if if I had to pick uh, one of those two, I, I usually lean in a game like that to the to the hometown, but which which is not this case, but. Um, or no, this this is in Chicago, right? Oh, even better. Uh, Zach Wilson is at 32 right now. So Carson Wentz is, in fact, like I said, a marginal <laughs> upgrade. Okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I if Kyler is there, which we're at about a 99.999% chance of that, I don't think I would go with it. You are, or would you? Are you? Are you willing to play the Falcons against Kyler in his first game? No, no, okay. no, I'm not. In fact, let's go to full stream ahead, and you'll find out why. So, here's what's on the docket. Just kidding. Here, <laughs> psych. Here, well, because I I wanted to highlight this because I have I'm I'm contractually obligated to hate on Arthur Smith as much as I possibly right, right, right. can. So, because you're a man of honor. Th- thank you. I have dignity. So, currently, Arthur's on a losing streak, back-to-back weeks, backup quarterbacks. Yeah. And now if he loses this one, it's a starting quarterback, but it would be their first game in the middle of the season mm-hmm. when your team Off should be – of your, major injury uh, yeah. projected for the number one pick. Yeah. Just – that's what's at stake here, Arizona. Yeah. Come on, Cardinals. <laughs> you got to – the whole world is rooting for you. <laughs> oh, please, please. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, face off against the ultimate threat in a single player, settle old scores on 16 iconic maps in multiplayer, and survive the hordes in a co-op open world zombie experience. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, available November 10th. Rated M for Mature. Full stream ahead. All right, we'll get it out of the way. Jay Grizz, his stream of the week. It is uh, <laughs> this Bilbo Bajant or Secret Bajant Man. Secret Bajant. I would not do it. Against I, Carolina? I, mean, no. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it either, but we know Jay Grizz. Yep. He's always going to go Bears with Bears above guys. all. 
Um, All right, Jay, you you mentioned it. Look, I am in. I've said this since before the season, through the season. Week one, Kyler Murray's in my lineup. Uh, I'm I'm not going to be starting him over. You know the, what? If like you had Jared Goff, I would I would play Jared Goff. Okay. Um, All right, but I'll make a note for my friend. <laughs> Um, let, let me just take a little quick look see here because I, I moved him where I thought I would have him. Goff is playing the Chargers. I, no, 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 I oh. know. Uh, so here are the quarterbacks I would play above Kyler. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Jared Goff, and Dak Prescott. If I've got one of those guys, All right. I'm playing those guys. Other hot names, Trevor Lawrence, Brock Purdy, CJ Stroud off his performance. Personally, I'm putting Kyler Murray in over them. Uh, I th I'm not terrified about this injury. He has taken his time. He's taken the longer end of the timeline to recover. And while I don't think he will be at peak performance, I don't think he's going to be at 100% pre-ACL performance. I think he will He will run the ball. I literally went today to just see what the line on his rushing total was because I was going to probably take the over. I'm assuming it's going to come out kind of mild, worried about the ACL. Um, it wasn't out yet. But I think he runs the ball. I think he's really good for this system. I think he's had enough time to practice the system. You're getting presumably James Conner back. You've got Hollywood Brown. The Atlanta Falcons are um, not very good over the last month. They're 31st, 31st in scheduled adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. And Kyler Murray is slayed for fantasy football. When he starts a game, he's over 20 points in fantasy points. So um, I'm I'm starting him week one. I ain't afraid. The, the fact that at least the roster percentage that I'm looking at right now, Kyler Murray's at 60%. The fact that that is not 100% yeah. or whatever accounting for dead leagues is 95 just the maximum. Kyler Murray should be rostered in every single league because of the upside. If Kyler Murray is back, the Cardinals are going to be the greatest fantasy team ever because their defense is – Awful. You want to know why the it Vikings were so awful. good last year? Because the Vikings were yeah. so bad last year on defense. You want a good offense with a bad defense. Yeah. It's fantasy gold. So, I mean, Kyler Murray is, especially with a lackluster waiver wire week, if you don't need someone to, like, I got I have to pick up someone to play in my flex, This get Kyler Murray, make sure someone else does not get Kyler Murray, and then there's still bye weeks and yeah. things. The 40% the of dumb leagues out there where he is available <laughs> – Make sure you pick him up, even if you've got Josh Allen. And you're not going to start him this week. Pick him up and put him on your bench because you could trade him if he becomes – Right. Teams are – if you don't have one of those, like, main options, those top six guys, you are struggling this year and you are looking for someone to come in and rescue your quarterback position. My streamer is Taylor Heineke against that Arizona team because they are bad. And Taylor Heineke, like, he at least has weapons – We'll see if Drake London is back for them this week, but the Cardinals are 28th in schedule adjusted points, 29th in yards per attempt, 31st in completion percentage allowed. They are a bad, bad defense, and now you have the possibility that Arizona will be able to keep up and they will be able to score points. Other guys, you know, like Geno, if he is available. Yeah, Geno, Sam he Howell. Could be a, Geno could be a drop it like it's hot when waivers run. Boom, there's Geno Smith just chilling on the waiver wire for you. Yeah, it, it makes sense after his bad game. But uh, the the Manders and the Seahawks, I want both quarterbacks fine with playing. I'm not even sure who I would play ahead. I think I would play Sam Howell ahead of Geno. I think I'd play Howell as well. Because uh, he's been running enough. But uh, but both are good streaming options. Uh, any other streamers out there that you like this week? Um, Not this week, but let's say you are in a league that Kyler's not available. I Josh Dobbs is worth a pickup to me. The Saints this week, I don't love it. But then you get Denver, and then you get Chicago, and uh, let, let's an say let's possibility. What if Justin Just Jefferson is back? Exactly. And now, instead of Josh Dobbs throwing to only Hollywood Brown, <laughs> now he's throwing to Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, and he's a mobile quarterback. Josh Dobbs is yeah. is an intriguing. And what's funny, is, moving forward. what's funny is um, when they brought him in, I thought he was a backup piece that might start th this week until... Um, Which they've already said he's going to start. Yeah, I mean, now after yeah. that game, it's like, oh, he's, yeah. he is the starter rest of the season. He just became a, a, a Minnesota Nikon. 
<laughs> he became a national hero, Jason. Yes. And we're all celebrating with Minnesota. That's going to do it for the show. Good luck on the waivers. If you want our full waiver rankings, thefantasyfootballers.com. We have those up there. They're available for everybody. Tomorrow we got hungry for more. We're going to break down the Thursday night matchup and jump into the mailbag. You know, some starts of the week. Just just a lot of more stuff coming up. And a final reminder, ballersdiscord.com. Number one, you get to join a really awesome happening. It's happening, Jay. It's hopping. Hopping. It's a fantasy football community. It's hopping. It is <laughs> Thank you. It's free. You you go in there, you cut it up with some other foot clan members and just have a good time talking about football. And in the announcements channel is the link to the vote for the top 10 nicknames of all time for the fantasy footballers. We need your voice. And those results will be shared on Thursday's show. That's going to do it. We will see all y'all tomorrow. Hopefully we have flushed out Monday night's matchup. And Andy will be back for show 15. He will. Goodbye, everybody. you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers